Okay, welcome to service this morning. Um, I don't see any announcements other than I have been asked to announce that keep the family of Tyler Crosses in your prayers. He uh, was involved in a fatal car accident Friday evening. That's all I know. Please keep him in your prayers. Yes. Yes, it was fatal. Mm -hmm. so. um, one other thing, I know every church has their own rituals with when they stand, sit, and such. I'll leave that up to you. If someone wants to take the lead on that, go right ahead. I won't. <laughs> and I better grab myself a book here. Sorry about that. And we will begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly mag love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And now we will have our gathering song, uh, Awake, O Sleeper, Rise from Death, number 452.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now for prayer of the day. Holy and loving God, your Son proclaimed living water to all who are thirsty. We are thirsty, Lord. Quench our thirst with your living water and hear our souls. Amen. And now I invite our reader forward. The first reading comes from the Gospel according to John, John 7, verses 37 through 52. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, this is really the prophet. Others said, this is the Messiah. But some asked, surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the temple police went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, why, not, why did you not arrest him? The police answered, never has anyone spoken like this. Then the Pharisees replied, surely you have not been deceived too, have you? Has any one of the authorities or of the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, they are accursed. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus before and who was one of them, asked, our law does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they are doing, does it? They replied, surely you are not also from Galilee, are you? Search and you will see that no prophet is to arise from Galilee. Word of God, word of life. Second reading comes from Psalm 40, verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts of Israel, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, and those who hope in his steadfast love. Word of God, word of life. Jesus was in Jerusalem for a week-long festival. And this was known as the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles was held in the fall of the year and was a celebration of the harvest and also of the Israelites' 40-year trek out of slavery in Egypt. The event we heard about today took place on the last day of this feast. A priest brought water from the pool of Siloam, I believe is how you say it, and poured it into a silver basin near the altar. Then that priest called upon God to provide heavenly water in the form of rain so that they could again have good crops. This is when Jesus said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. I can only imagine the response to this bold statement. This man stands up and makes this bold, bold statement while the high priest is doing his ritual. There were those that believed he was the Messiah and understood what he was talking, that he was actually talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Others, though, doubted who he was 
after all, the Messiah surely couldn't come from Galilee, they were saying. And remember last week, they were saying that the Messiah could not be the son of Joseph. You know, so you can, you can kind of see the dissension rising among especially the leaders. Um, the, in today's reading, there are police officers actually sent out to arrest him, but they failed to do so because they are so, on, so in awe of the authority with which he was speaking. Some of the leaders even, like Nicodemus, were siding with Jesus, further fueling this dissension. You know, we, we see this is growing and growing and growing until his actual um, arrest and uh, subsequent crucifixion. But now, getting back to the water talked about today, water is essential to life. We all know that. We can survive very few days without water, actually. Um, and I'm sure we've all experienced a time of extreme thirst, thirst or dehydration of physical water. And I guess I think back to a time in my life um, often, 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 often. Um, I was running the Houston Marathon. It's in January, so of course I trained in cool, cold, snowy North Dakota to run this marathon. And it was a it was extraordinarily hot the year I ran it. I believe the temp the start at the start the temperature was 80, and I believed at the finish it was like 84 or 5, something like that. And the humidity, of course, in Houston is unbearable. So to me, the humidity matched the temperature. So I'm going along doing my usual thing. I always took one cup of water at every aid station. I drank a little bit, and then I threw the rest on my head or on my back or, or whatever, you know. And I'm going along. I'm about half done. I'm thinking, huh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to be fine. Well, <laughs> was about mile 16, 17 maybe, I started feeling cramping coming on in my legs. And... The next miles were excruciating. I was cramping, I was nauseous, I had a headache. I was, it was horrible, but I, I did finish, but I suffered greatly. I just couldn't get enough water in me, and it took me about two, three days to, to recuperate. You know, I was getting cramps all the time, I was just nauseous, the whole thing. And now when I think about that, I think about our spiritual water is just as important. We need to constantly quench that thirst also. Or we end up in trouble, just like we do when we don't have our physical water. You know, we fall away from God in different ways by when we don't quench this spiritual water water and that's basically what it was what this whole thing was about now last week I'm, I'm kind of wandering here but there is something that I really would like to share with you today last week Jesus said I am the bread of life well upon looking into this I found that there are actually seven I am statements in John these statements make the claims of who he was in terms that we could understand, such as bread, water, we will find light, that kind of thing. God revealed himself to Moses in Exodus 3.14 as I am. And Jesus knew that the followers would understand these statements and know he was the Messiah. So I'm going to end today with these talking a little bit about these seven I am statements. I never really thought about them before. I've heard them, but I never really thought about the significance. It's, it's how Jesus was teaching us what he came to teach us. The first one, of course, is I am the bread of life. Jesus said this shortly after he'd fed the 5,000 and the people wanted more free food. 
But Jesus didn't want to keep filling their stomachs. He wanted to see them that physical food only satisfied hunger temporarily. But he was the one who would satisfy them spiritually with spiritual food. He was saying he is the bread that provides life. Manna satisfied the needs of the Israelites in the wilderness, but only for a while. Christ satisfies our spiritual needs forever. Those who believe in Jesus have life. The man in the wilderness satisfied temporary hunger, just like that water temporarily satisfied me. And those who ate it eventually died. Jesus provides the bread of life that leads to life everlasting. The second I am. I am the light of the world. This happened also during the Feast of the Tabernacles. He made this statement just after forgiving rather than condemning the woman that had been caught in adultery and the Pharisees had brought before him. Jesus was letting him know that in a world darkened by sin, he offers light and guidance to those stumbling in sin. Jesus was epitomizing the character of God as a son, which provides light, a shield, which protects, and grace, which forgives for the glory of God. I am the gate of the sheepfold. A sheepfold is a corral. This statement of Jesus was made during a discourse with Israel's religious leaders in which Jesus, in so many words, declared them unfit shepherds of their nation. Thus, Jesus was describing his care and constant devotion to those who are his. This statement also reinforces what he says in John 14 about being the only way to come to the Father. The only way to get into God's sheepfold is to go through Jesus, the door or the entryway. I am the good shepherd. With this statement, Jesus described his sacrificial love for his people. He was letting the Israelites know that unlike a hired man who will run and leave a flock unprotected in order to save his own life, he will not but Jesus will not abandon his sheep. He will keep watch over his people. This was a prophetic utterance about his coming sacrificial death to save both Jews and Gentiles who would believe in his name. Jesus refers to himself as the ultimate good shepherd who was about to give his life for his sheep and fulfill his father's plan of salvation for us all. I am the resurrection of li and life. Jesus spoke this crowning statement of hope to his grieving friend Martha after her brother Lazarus had died. He says, and, any, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Death brought, brought a sense of despair, hopelessness, and finality until Jesus spoke those glorified words and then demonstrated them by bringing his dead friend back to life. He also demonstrated this with his own resurrection. All who live in Christ will live forever. I am the way, the truth, the life. When the disciples were confused about Jesus' statements about heaven, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus was reiterating that all roads do not lead to heaven. There are not many paths or religions to God. Jesus is the only way to forgiveness, the only source for truth and knowledge and the only route to eternal life. Jesus offers to the spiritually dead people the very life of God, and there are no other options. This statement was significant to those of his day who were trying to gain access to God's favor throughout law and their good works, what they did on earth here. And it is significant to us today because we are surrounded by many beliefs and religions claiming to access God in a way to earn God's favor and eternal life apart from Jesus alone. And the seventh, I am the true vine. Jesus said this to his followers in the upper room on the night of his arrest and impending death. 
The Old Testament contains many references to Israel as God's vine. But because of the nation's unfruitfulness, Jesus came to fulfill God's plan. Then we cannot help but bear fruit that will honor the Father. In this metaphor, he is the gardener. In him and in his nurturing, tend, tending, pruning, you and I can grow to our potential and bear much fruit. Jesus is saying, stick close to me and you will be able to accomplish much for my Father's glory. Amen. And now we will do the hymn of the day, Let Streams of Living Justice. <laughs> We will continue with the prayers of intercession as soon as Sherry brings me a copy. I thought I had them along. <laughs> I'm sorry.
sorry. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for the church universal, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel. Grant us what we need as Christians to make your kingdom come around us. May your love be known through our words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the well-being of creation. Thank you for the gift of this planet, the gift of life. Provide what the world needs to survive and give us the wisdom to share with those in need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace and justice in the world, the nations, those in authority and community. Make your peace be known. May your justice flow and may your love abound. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for people who are poor, people who are oppressed, people who are sick, people grieving, and people that are lonely. Open our eyes to see the needs of others, that we may love them as you call us to love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Especially we pray this day for those listed in our bulletin and for the family of Tyler. And for all those that we name now, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for the promise of everlasting life. We promise you that relationships are so important, you promise they will last forever. As we grieve, give us comfort, strength, as we wait for your promise to be fulfilled. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we will continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now peace, may peace be with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. And our offering is in the rear of the church. And thank you. Let us pray. God, of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. <clears throat> Amen. And now let us pray as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 
And now we will sing the sending song, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. And now, go in peace and serve the Lord. Have a wonderful week, and may your spiritual thirst always be quenched. <laughs>